Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where my partner and I, John Coleman, have the wonderful opportunity today to once again speak with Bill Jordan, our favorite boom embracer. Hey, Bill. Good, good to see yes. you. Yes. Yes. Thank you, guys. Good to Are see you Are you all. booming, Bill? That's what I want to know. Are you booming? I am booming. I start my every every day with this. It's sort of my, I've told you this, sort of a psychological anchor to remind me to live my life, forget yep. my age, and embrace the boom. Yep. And I say we that as a relatively people. new, new minted 68 year old guy. Well, you're well, old. Question. You're really you know, old. Um, us baby boomers have adult children. Most of us have children who are adults. And I was taken the other day. Um, I, I don't know why, it, but it was like a, a, a you know, a wake up call. I was talking to my son, and I'm asking him for stock tips. What 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 happened? What happened to me giving him financial advice? <laughs> you, know, you know, you're gonna make sure your 401k. What? Yeah. And, and he's yeah. giving me stock. It's it's kind of changing, isn't it? Well, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting. Awesome. And somewhere along the line, that was already happening, and you just didn't notice it. That's I, I believe because what what I think happens now. Some people I I do think gets this backwards, and I'm not trying to judge, but it is an observation. Of I see some parents initially try to be their child's friend, mm. and then as they get into the formative years of the 13 and the 14s, you know, middle school and high school. Then they feel like, okay, now I've got to be a parent. Well, yeah. personally, I think if you're the parent first and doing, here's what you do in here, and you set some boundaries and you do some discipline, then you become their friend. And that happens somewhere along the line to where, you know, not just shared jokes and stuff, but yeah, my daughter, you know, one of my favorite things is when my daughter, who, who will be 40, by the way, in December, uh, is like, how did that happen? Um, and she's been doing this for a number of years now, she'll send me a song, a YouTube video of a group I've never heard of, or, you know, a new version of something, or she'll send me a song that we used to listen to in the car on road trips when she was a little girl, but she remembers that. Yeah. So, the, yeah, but she's, she's helped me with the Embrace the Boom thing. She helped me set up my website, helped me get the Embrace the Boom mugs ordered and all yep. that stuff. So, yep. yeah, she's, uh, she's uh, not only my daughter, but my friend, and in in uh, in many ways, sort of like a a, a business uh, advisor or consultant to yeah. me, you yeah. know. And and quite honestly, and um, she she inspires me. She for thirty nine going on forty. She is so far beyond what I was mature wise and just gutsy uh, uh, than I was when I was forty. You know, I, I just I just think that highly ever. But that is something to look forward to. And, and I see it with my friends, with their kids. And the other cool thing, and I think we've talked about this, too, is when your your friends, kids become your friends. Yes. Not only your not only do your kids become your friends, yeah. but now you're now you're friends with your friends, kids. Yeah, that's that's so special that yeah. I can't explain it to you. I think it's wonderful that the transition, um, the relationship transitions so slowly that we don't notice it. I think that's that we good. don't notice. Yeah, uh, but but it does transition, and of course, at at some point, uh, the parent is becoming so old they they you know that's the classic situation. The baby becomes yeah. a baby, and the the yeah. child becomes the parent to actually change your diapers right. and you know, right all, right. And you know and, and the the. the, the well, you know, here's the thing, and it is it is a reality of, and, I, and I've, it occurred to me is, uh, uh, oh gosh, uh, both of my parents and both of my wife's parents kind of, I mean, it, they lingered, you know, and it's not like when people will just kind of make it a blanket statement and go, well, you become your parents' parent, and that that's like it's it's a yes and no because when you are a parent of a child, you see progression in your child. You yeah. see digression in your parent, and that's that's part of the sadness to that. You know, um, just I'm just speaking in reality terms. Sure. Um, but but it is also an honor to care for them. Um, it it really is. It's an honor to be a caregiver 
Oh me. yeah. You know another oh, yeah. twist. Another twist on this, I think, that uh, and you begin to see it happen, uh, maybe as early as when kids are, are teens, and they're beginning to get best friends, uh, and certainly if they go off and they get uh, married, and uh, well, even if they're living somewhat near to you, not necessarily in the old neighborhood in Brooklyn where everybody grew up in the same house next to daughter to each other, but uh, if they live then the next time over, they, they, they begin to get best friends and friendships where they'll start maybe going on vacations with them, or they spend, uh, their kids spend a lot of time together. Uh, so uh, all of a sudden, it's not that little nuclear unit that everybody comes home and has dinner together or spends the weekend together. And, and so that, uh, uh, but as an offshoot of that, I probably found the most difficult thing to do even though I knew I was going to do it and I did it purposefully, was that you at some point you need to stop giving kids advice yeah. and offering it because you're basically, as opposed to telling them what to do, well, yeah. brush your teeth in the morning or uh, you really have to start saving for retirement because those things can become kind of toxic. But at some point you have to be letting them make their own mistakes, just as our parents did with us for, for better or for worse. And uh, that's hard to do because you see them doing something where, you know, it's not to their best advantage. And sometimes you just let them have to do it and not say anything about it. And and conversely, the children, the grown children, as they uh, now have their own kids and their own lives, and they need to learn and, and do learn to accept the parents saying things like, are you okay with money? You know, are you, did, is it, is it, because they know, they learn after a while of, instead of saying, geez, mom, get off my back, will you? Come on, I'll go. It, they learn that it's a way of caring, that your parents sure. still care for you, sure. no matter how old you are. Uh, John, you mean you're trying to teach the kids to learn how to say, hey, mom, dad, are you okay with money? Yeah, take some. We got plenty. Yeah. I mean, don't, it's really okay. You used to give us money for ice cream. Here's money for paying the rent. Yeah, exactly. I had a case of, you know, I, a case of that. I think last week my phone rang, cell phone rang. It was my daughter. Say, hey, what's going on? And she said, uh, would you happen to have a spare key to the forerunner? And I just said, how'd that happen? So what, what this is a harken back to when she was a teenager, she was forever locking her key, locking herself out of her car. <laughs> so now they're driving a forerunner that we've had and kind of handed it down to them, and she locked her key into the car. So she said, yeah, I knew that was coming. <laughs> so, I, you know, she's five minutes away. I take her spare key, and it was just a special kind of, um, I don't know, sort of a sentimental moment. It's like, here we are again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm bringing you a key to the car. And it, I think that meant a lot to her. And I just reminded her. And then I got to tell uh, my granddaughter, hey, I'm still her dad. You know, yeah. I'm still her dad. So uh, that was really just kind of some people may think that's silly, but that was a really special moment. And I loved doing it. Kind of gave me a kind of gave me a mission one afternoon. I was just sitting around in my chair and uh, doing some reading or something and say, and I, somebody, hey, somebody needs me. You know, well, here's you know, cool that, feeling. I think that that's kind of, that's a really sweet story. What kind of car uh, do you have now? What's your... I drive a Honda. Oh, right. When she says, by the way, Dad, do you have a spare key to the Honda? Then, you know, she's getting ready to take the keys and the car away from you because yes. oh. <laughs> you're, you're getting to the other side of the dark side. There is that. There is that. Well, here's okay. the parents and kids. God bless them. And there you go, man. Live your life. Forget your age. Embrace the boom. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.